Hi, my name is Lou Morris and the aim of this video is to help you tune up the Tushium XR race um, to get the best possible performance out of it. I'm not going to run through rigging from the very beginning. If you're unsure as to how we'll rig the sail, have a look at the video on the Tushium Lightning on the Tushium website. The difference will be if you're rigging the sail with an adjustable downhaul. Actually, it shouldn't attach the downhaul system or pull any downhaul on until you've put the boom on, pulled the outhaul on, and attached the cams to the mast. Okay, so it's um, really important to use an adjustable outhaul and adjustable downhaul to make the most of the huge tuning range the sail has. Um, so first, just to say, I'm using the exact settings that are printed on the sticker on the foot of the sail. I'm using the standard Tushingham 520 100% carbon mast. Um, I've got that with 36 centimetres extension for the 9.5 and the boom is set for the setting printed on the bottom of the sail. So now I'm going to show you how to attach the adjustable downhaul system. I've got this rope at the top of the system, which is, I've tied a knot into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rope put it around the mast like this and I'm going to take the knotted end of the rope and cross over this, this part of the rope and I'm going to put it back around the mast the opposite direction okay like this you can see I've got a bit of a loop here and I'm going to put the knot through that loop and pull it tight so the knot is by there and what I've done actually I put a piece of tape around the mast just to make sure that this doesn't slip. So um, I'm just going to thread the downhaul so the rope doesn't cross over. I've got, I'm rigging the sail starboard tack up, which is what I like to do with this mast extension because it has a cleat on the top. But um, sometimes it's probably easier to rig the sail port side up because that's where the cam zips are. But anyway, so I'm going to take this rope, it's going to come down from the adjustable system and I'm going to put it through the middle pulley. It's the top one in this case, but anyway, through the middle, down. I'm going to take the end of the rope, and I'm going to go down through the outermost of the tack pulleys. Down through here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back through the bottom pulley, the opposite way round. So that's going to go down and then back up to the tack pulleys and I'm going to go up through the pulley that's closest to the mast like this and then finally I'm going to put the end through the cleat like that and you can see none of the ropes are crossing which means it's easy to pull down all up. really important to use the tack strap um, because it gives the sail a lot of shape in the bottom so um, you should pull quite a lot of tension on it like this and um, you can see that the sail will have a lot of tension on that bottom button once I've got um, my sail to the minimum downhaul setting I'll do all my adjustment on the adjustable system I actually never touch the downhaul in the extension once I've got it to that minimum setting it's really important to be able to reproduce your downhaul settings so that you go on the water and the downhaul setting is exactly the same every time. So what I do is I put a piece of tape around the mast extension and when I'm rigging my sail up I pull the downhaul on until the tack pulley is aligned with the bottom of this piece of tape and that will be my minimum downhaul setting and that's the same every time I go on the water then all the rest of my adjustment can be taken from that on the adjustable system. Okay, so um, now I'm going to show you the setting I use for really, really light winds. So I'm going to keep my minimum downhill setting here. Okay, and you can see the sail is quite full and the leech is incredibly tight. It's hardly any floppiness at all and actually if you look at the luff sleeve here it's uh, not very tight it's a little bit loose it's not so loose that it's all creased and stuff but it's not really really tight okay actually this is too much outhaul so I need to let my outhaul off 
like that and you can see now the sail's got really quite a deep shape. Like this, okay? And the tack strap is giving a nice bit of shape in the bottom here. And if we look on the underside of the sail, you can see it's about two fingers away from the boom. This will obviously vary depending on how wide your boom is, but just as a guide, it's like that. So when I'm pumping upwind, this baton will just be tapping the boom every time I pump. Okay, if we look up the sail, see these three cammed buttons have got a nice lot of tension, which gives them this nice shape. We don't have any vertical creases next to them, but also the um, the second batten down, which doesn't have a cam on, I've still got quite a lot of tension in that batten to give it a nice, um, fairly full shape, even in the top of the sail, which makes this sail really good in light wind. It's got a nice lot of shape in the whole sail body. Okay, so this is the light wind setting. Just pick the sail up so you can see it a little bit better. So if you look, the bottom of the sail is nice and full. I've got lots of tack strap tension to give this bottom batten a nice bit of shape. Okay. You see this nice shape here in these cambered buttons. If you look right up to the top of the sail, you can see that second button down has got some tension. I've tensioned that button quite a lot, so the sail is really nice and curved from the top right down to the bottom. And the sail look works really well like that. You can see that you don't need much outhaul at all. Okay. You don't want to have no outhaul because then you'll break your battens and you won't be able to point high up wind. But you don't want to rig your sail with not much downhaul, but a lot of outhaul. You just look horrible. And as you can see, there's no tension in this panel. The sail's all flat, it's got no power. It's rubbish. Let your outhaul off a load. There we are sail set for light winds. Okay, so this is my setting for really light winds. So I'm talking like five knots or less. When wind starts getting to six or seven knots, the board starts railing up wind. And when I'm railing up wind, I don't just want raw power. I want myself to be efficient so I can go fast. And to do that, I'm going to pull a bit of downhaul on. So, something like this. And if you look at the sail now, you can see that the very top panel is a tiny bit loose. Leech in general is tight, so I've got lots of power. It'll still pump really nicely. But now the head is just releasing, which means I won't necessarily be able to point quite as high, but I'll be able, the sail will be working much more efficiently and I'll be able to go much faster. And actually, I don't really touch my outhaul that much um, then. I'll have the sail will actually be touching the boom, um, kind of halfway along the boom, which gives me plenty of belly, plenty of power. When the wind starts picking up more, I basically just progressively pull more downhaul on. And so, something like this, maybe so 10 knots. So I'm now planing downwind still fairly tight in the bottom which allows me to point really high up wind it gives me lots of power downwind but again you can see that top panel is quite loose now so the head's going to release the wind really nice and we're going to be able to go really fast and as for outhaul I'll pull a bit on but the sail is still going to be just touching the boom maybe a little bit past my outhaul cleat in these winds and again you need to be aware as you pull more downhaul on also need to pull more tack strap on to keep this nice shape on the bottom. Okay so this is my setting for kind of planing conditions but not really really windy basically. So if you look at the sail you can see that it's quite flat at the top but I still don't want so much downhaul that I lose all of my power. So I've got quite a lot of shape in the foot of the sail but the top of the sail is quite flat. And also the leech is nice and floppy which means that the sail is going to release the wind and I'm going to be able to go really fast and not feel backhanded and overpowered when I'm going upwind. Just to say, when you're going downwind, it's really important that you let your outhaul off. It makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Okay, so when I'm going upwind, as I said before, when I'm powered up and raiding nicely, 
I like to have the sail so it's touching the boom. Not all the way to the harness lines because then I have too much power and I won't be able to point high. But I'll have it touching at least the outhaul cleat, if not a bit further forwards on the sail. And actually, when you go downwind, a lot more power. And on modern racing course, it's um, you don't have so much reaching, but you have really deep downwind courses where you're going from jive to jive in the broadest possible reach you can. And to do that, you need a lot of power. So when you go around the point of mark, what you can do is let your outhaul off, so the sail is touching the boom almost all the way to the mast. That gives you the power, and because the sail is really deep in the front, it pulls you and lets you point really broad downwind. And um, some people like to let the downhaul off a little bit when they go around the windward mark. It gives you that extra power to go really broad. Actually, if it's full power planing, I don't bother with that because I want my leech loose so I go fast. But if it looks a bit marginal, I'll probably let my downhaul off a little bit as I go around the windward mark to give me more power so I can pump and point really deep on the plane. Okay, so on my downhaul system, I can adjust it at the top and the bottom. This is what a lot of downhaul systems are like. Um, and actually, when you're on the water, it's much easier to adjust the bottom rope because you can pull up. So actually, if it's windy, before I leave the beach, I kind of maybe set the top one to a certain um, length, and then I'll do the rest of my adjustment with the top, with the the bottom rope. And actually. Like I said earlier when I was talking about the base, the amount of downhaul I have on the extension, what I want is I want to be able to replicate my settings exactly every time I go on the water. So I know my sails set exactly the same each time. What I do with my adjustable downhaul is I'll have positions that I know about. Okay, so, so I'll say I'll pull the rope to this cleat here. Okay, so maybe this is. I don't know, 12 knots or something, and then my next setting, okay, I'll pull it to there. So that's the same every time. Then the next one, okay, I'll pull it to the boom, and then to the top of the boom cutout, okay, and that way I know each, like where each setting is. Okay, so I've shown you the sail can be rigged incredibly full with a really tight leech for winds of like five knots or less. And actually, you can use this sail only up to 30 knots. I don't try to use it in 30 knots. I prefer to be on the smaller sail because I go faster then. Actually, you can pull a lot of downhaul on. So I've got my extension and the recommended setting, 36 centimeters. And I'll actually show you what the sail looks like with the maximum amount of downhaul I can get. Okay, so if you look, here at the bottom of the sail you can see that this tack pulley the tack pulley is right down to the extension there so I can't get any more okay if you look at the sail you can see it's possible to rig the sail like this and that is a proper way of rigging the sail it's not going to break or anything it's designed to be like that okay, you can see it's completely really collapsed away you can see the top of the sail is completely flat, there's actually no shape there at all but I've still got a bit of curvature in the bottom and this sail actually works really well as a strong wind sail it's quite stable um, if you look at the second batten down you can see it's not folding away that's because that batten has still got the tension I use for, um, for light winds so actually if I know it's going to be a windy day I'll detension that batten a little bit just so that it twists off a bit more. I don't want that shape there anymore. So this is kind of, for me, this is like 18 knots or um, or more. I'd have it with this much downhill.